Welcome back everybody. I hope everyone's doing all right today. I've got a tutorial here. I'm going to show you how to remove some flyaway hairs with the quick select tool and the refine edge utility uh, in Photoshop CS5 exclusively. So let's begin. Let's take a selection around the area where the flyaway hairs are on the outside. All right, that'll do. Now we'll use the select menu, refine edge, and we'll use the the brush that it shows us here to paint around the areas that we're concerned with. You'll see it sort of snaps to those areas. We we'll use a couple of these different parameters to refine this a bit. The smart radius will sort of pick up on the color differences and have the tool snap to a little bit. I like to use uh, both the feather and contrast just to get a little bit of a cleaner selection. And then finally we'll use decontaminate colors. Bring that out a little bit to kind of remove some of what the light put there. We'll say OK. And it'll create us a whole new layer with just our selection just as soon as my computer decides to do that for us. OK. Let's reveal the background layer. And now we've got a nice selection. If we hit control and we left click the layer mask, then we can see our selection. And what I like to do is I like to invert the selection by pressing control shift I. And that'll protect any of the hair on the inside from being cloned out. So we'll use the clone stamp tool and we will select a source around. Well, it would help if I created a new layer. So I like to create a new layer, ensure that all layers for the stamp tool is selected so that we can sample all the layers and we'll start to clone away the uh, the flyaway hairs here and as you can see I'm getting my brush all over that area and it doesn't affect it because it's protected by the by the inverted selection now y'all know this won't be perfect but I just want to give you the right idea and thankfully we have a uh, a blurry background so it won't matter if we kind of mess that up a little bit uh, clone out. oh well not that all right well that'll do just for our purposes here today so we'll deselect and we got kind of a better oh well I took some of her uh the forehead off. So we'll create a layer mask because we kind of do want to bring back some of the fill in the hair if you notice we're missing a couple little areas. So we'll select our brush tool and uh, ensure the foreground color is black and we'll get rid of some of that. And we'll bring back some of this. I like to use uh, a hard brush for this just uh, since it's such a sharp edge we're working with. So we'll bring back some of these areas that we knocked out no worries if it looks a little bit jagged. We'll fix that with the liquify filter here in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and create a whole new merged layer, um, which we'll do by hitting Control Alt Shift E as an echo, and it'll create a merged layer on top that's got all of our layers combined inside of it. So on that one, you will use the filter liquify and we'll be using it well we should zoom in just a bit now and then we'll use the forward warp tool up here in the corner we'll just sort of use the edge of the brush that's how I like to do it I mean everyone is different and we'll move in the areas that are sort of jagged so we can get a kind of a round a nice clean edge where we did our edits <coughs> and I'm not super sure what that is but let's try and push it all in there Let's see, we'll just give it a nice, we can clone out other bits, and like I said before, it's not going to be perfect, but that's for me to show you guys how we go about using this technique. Let's see, we got a little bit of a discrepancy here, but I'm not going to worry about it for the for the purposes of this tutorial. That looks relatively decent, at least for the educational purposes here. 
All right, let's take a look at a at a before and after. <laughs> 